We're continuing our studies of protein function in Chapter 5, and we're continuing to look at structural proteins. In this lesson, we'll look at tubulin and microtubules. In some ways, the assembly of tubulin to form these microtubules is very similar to actin, and in some ways it's different. The first difference is the fundamental unit is a dimer rather than a monomer. So at the top of the screen here, you see the two subunits, alpha and beta tubulin. That's our dimer, and those dimers will assemble to form this protofilament. And there's an asymmetry that is al it is always beta alpha, beta alpha. The second difference is that rather than a single filament, these assemble to form a cylinder, and we'll see how in just a moment. This makes it a very rigid structure, much stronger than the actin filaments, and that's important for its biological role, as we'll see a little bit later. Think about a bicycle frame. It's a series of hollow cylinders, hollow metal cylinders, and that makes it very sturdy, very strong, able to withstand a lot of pressure. If instead we took that same framework, melted it down, and composed it into solid rods, they'd be much weaker, much less able to handle that stress. And that has to do with the structure of microtubules, this cylindrical form. Let's look a little bit more at that tubulin dimer. So here we have the uh, structure of alpha-beta tubulin, the alpha subunit in green, the beta in blue. You can see the alpha helices and beta strands and the loops that form the secondary structure. Overall structure is globular for each of the monomers, just like we saw in actin, that's the tertiary structure. Here we have a quaternary structure, though, because we have two separate subunits. You'll notice also that both the alpha and beta subunits are nucleotide binding proteins, just like we saw with actin. In actin, it was ATP. In this case, it's GTP. Perhaps the best way to remember that is actin binds ATP. So the significance is the same. It binds these nucleotides, in this case GTP, and we're going to use GTP hydrolysis to drive the assembly of the filament, just as we used ATP hydrolysis to drive the assembly of the actin filament. Energetically, the hydrolysis of GTP gives us the same amount of energy as ATP hydrolysis. Now here's another difference we notice in the dimer. So here are the yellow GTP molecules pictured in our structure here. You'll notice the GTP in the alpha subunit, once it assembles into the dimer, is buried within the protein. It's not solvent exposed. That tells us that GTP will not be hydrolyzed. But if we look at the beta subunit, here's our GTP, and similar to actin, those nucleotide binding sites are towards the top of the molecule but this one is solvent exposed in the beta subunit, so that's the one that's going to get hydrolyzed, as we'll see. These alpha-beta tubulin dimers will assemble into the protofilament. They will assemble, and as, just as in actin, the dimer will add to the filament, and then GTP is hydrolyzed. We only need the amount of energy in one uh, phosphate bond, and so we only hydrolyze one GTP, just as we only needed one ATP hydrolysis to drive the assembly of one of the monomers to the filament. In this case, however, we're going to take those protofilaments and line them up side by side to form our cylinder. It's going to take about 13 of those to do that. The other thing we find is that it also, that these microtubules also have a plus end and a minus end. That is, these dimers add more readily to the plus end than the minus end. We notice also that these dimers can add at any point in this process, while it's forming the protofilament, in the process of assembling the cylinder, or after the cylinder is assembled. These structures are used to construct cilia and flagella, very large structural components and subject to a lot of frictional force, and so they need to be very strong. The other biological role is that they're used to align and separate pairs of chromosomes during mitosis. So in that case, structure and stability is absolutely essential. Again, its structure fits perfectly its function within the cell. On the upper left, you can see a cryo-electron micrograph of the microtubule, you get a little bit better idea of the shape of that. In our next lesson, we're going to start to look at the intermediate filaments. We'll look at keratin and how it forms complex structures that are present in skin, hair, and nails. And then we'll look at the basic structure of collagen and how it assembles to form more complex structures.